What is up, guys, and welcome to F122, my team. In today's video, we're going to be cramming an entire season in under 20 minutes. So this has taken a lot of effort. Hopefully, you guys will appreciate this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'm so close to 700,000 subscribers. Hopefully, we can get there soon. But in today's video, we're doing something special. We are starting off as a championship contender, something I won't be doing in my mainstay series of my team. This is an experiment to see how it works for the first season, see how the balancing is um, in this incomplete or work in progress version of F122. So bearing in mind, there could be a few glitches, there could be a few issues, and uh, this isn't the full version of the game. So with that said, Let's get into it. Welcome to my team. Here you'll experience the world of Formula One not only as a driver, but as the owner of a brand new F1 team. First things first, let's create your driver. All right, so not too much has changed in the way of driver avatars. Most of them are the same. I, I've noticed there's a few extra female avatars to choose from, which is really nice. Same with the sponsors, that's all pretty much the same. The performance here of each of the teams and their reliability can definitely change as we get to the full version of the game. I selected to have the My Team icons appear in my version of My Team. Um, and maybe that's taken away from the selection of F2 drivers I could choose from. Oscar Piastri was not there at least at the starts. So we've chosen Michael Schumacher as our starting driver for this My Team journey. And that's the flexibility that being a championship contending team right from the start gets you. You can buy pretty much anyone. So that's exactly what we've done. New for this year are paint finishes in the customization of the livery. You can have matte, gloss, metallic, satin. And uh, I think that's a really nice option. Hopefully they extend that uh, into helmet options and uh, everything else that comes with customization. As you can see, I've gone for a McLaren Golf livery, but I, we're powered by Ferrari. So it's actually, it's a Ferrari, but it looks like a McLaren. This is quite the uh, abomination we have. Hello folks, and welcome to this, a very special edition of Paddock Pass. We're here at the headquarters of Formula One's newest team for an exclusive first look at what they will be bringing to the sport. It's always an exciting moment to welcome a new team onto the grid. However, what makes this occasion a little more special is how strikingly different the cars are this year. Yep, the long-awaited new regulations are finally here, and with them, the start of the next era of Formula One. The 2022 season ushers in a change of direction to the regulations aimed at promoting closer racing. With new aero additions in the form of swooping front and rear wings, along with the new eye-catching 18-inch low-profile tyres that will push tyre technology to the limit. So then, the question remains as to whether this team can grasp the opportunity before them with both hands and lead the charge against the rest of the paddock. We'll find out soon enough, as the new season is just about to begin. But first, let's see the unveiling of the team's car and meet the owner of the brand new Formula One team. Thank you for that, Will. We're going to gloss over this interview. Basically, it's the same as previous years where you big up certain uh, areas of your facilities and you'll have extra upgrades here or there depending on your answers so no need to really touch upon that the menus are pretty much the same for the most part some ui looks a little bit more updated refreshed which is a nice touch but on the whole it's the same look and feel as uh, you come to expect with my team hopefully in f123 we'll have a big shake up with this game mode so uh we start off in p2 being a championship contender with this car right up there with Ferrari and Red Bull. So we're mixing it with the best uh, in Formula One. In terms of the settings I've gone for, everything is neutral. Um, I don't have, you know, any fast resource point gain. It's neutral for myself and the AI. Same for cash gain and um, acclaim boosts and all that sort of stuff. So we're just exploring what we can, what we can do in the first season if we just play it out. 
uh, with a little bit of simulate, or a lot of simulating here and there, and taking part sparingly here and there. Here is the full driver market, at least at this stage. I did have a look and I couldn't find Nico Hulkenberg. Maybe that'll change with the full version of the game, but um, I definitely did see Hulkenberg in, or his name, in one of the trailers. Here is the customization uh, of the stickers. You've got 11 different sticker points to uh, put on the car, which is uh, really nice. I love the light blue and orange on, a, on an F1 car. It looks so damn good. But uh, we're just color coordinating some of those and, and making it look more like a real F1 car. And this is a beautiful canvas to have for this year. And I can't wait to do my proper My Team journey. So make sure you subscribe to see that in only a couple of weeks' time. So we're just uh, putting all the upgrades on. I started off with downforce because these 22 cars are very understeery. And um, making the car more capable through the high-speed corners is... Obviously a very good thing. Here we go for the first race now, and... Well, what's changed? The practice programs have, at least in the way that they're presented in the UI on screen. You can see how the live data reacts to your fuel burn, at least on that particular occasion. And it gives you, yeah, that telemetry that you see on screen there to see exactly where your strengths and weaknesses are in a particular practice program, and then adjust your driving accordingly. There's like a racing line type thing as well while you're driving on multiple laps, which showcases exactly how you're tracking uh, based on your previous telemetry. But here we go for our first race. I managed to qualify in P6 and we are getting our season underway with Michael Schumacher powered by a Ferrari driving what looks like a 2021 Golf McLaren. As expected, new game. Still the same terrible old me with my starts. That's a dive bomb there from Lando Norris. Clatters into the side of George Russell. And we got caught up in that with a bit of front wing damage. Which, if you get front wing damage on this game, it's not as brutal, thankfully. Uh, you don't get as much understeer. But that was a massive crash that we caused, unfortunately. Safety car has been brought out. Uh, change of front wing for us. I think we served a penalty potentially as well. And uh, we're back underway for this race once again. Boxing on the soft compound tyres. And in the 25% race, I was hoping to go to the end on these tyres. In previous games, you could do that. As, oh, we see Stroll and one of the Alpha Tauris in a bit of trouble at turn one. As Yuki Tsunoda is actually out of the Grand Prix. I thought he was swerving to get out of the way of someone. But no, he actually lost the tyre. And uh, that's... Well, promoted us up the order just a little bit more as we make moves on Ricardo. Yeah, I wanted to do a one-stop in this race, but the tire wear is actually quite brutal in this race. I hope you enjoyed that engine audio there. That is the new updated Ferrari engine sound, which wasn't in the previous build of the game. And I've got to say, it does sound very nice, particularly when you're wearing headphones. So hopefully your headphone users enjoyed that. Anyway, we marched our way through the field. Uh, double overtake there into turn one. There's still a bit of debris from a little bit earlier on in the race where we had some incidents. Sergio Perez has got a five-second stop-go penalty. So that's uh, potentially another position for us if we can stay close to him as Ricardo gets caught up on the side pod, the non-existent side pod of the Mercedes and uh, loses a lot of places in the process. Verstappen and Bottas pulling into the pit lane. We are moving up places in this race, and this is Carlos Sainz, the race leader, making a mistake. Unforced error. Sainz has been known for his mistakes in 2022, and Codemasters, that is the most brilliant bit of realism I have seen. Actually coding... AI mistakes into actual drivers who are making mistakes in this season. Is that intentional? I think Codemasters will claim that one. That was, uh, that was well done. Well done. Anyway, we're into the pit lane again because the tire wear isn't so great. And uh, I might potentially be able to still win this race if we can get another set of tires on. But what I didn't factor in was uh, Verstappen and Magnussen and I think Lando Norris. They stopped under the first safety car and put on mediums to go to the end. So I uh, kind of 
thought that they had to make another pit stop, but that wasn't the case. As Sergio Perez goes up the inside into the triple left-hander and makes a big mistake, a massive lock up there and relinquishes the place straight away. So the AI make mistakes on this year's game and it's beautiful to see. Right, we've got enough fuel for three more laps. That has bought me a little bit more time in my conquest to get on the podium. Magnussen is up next and we're having a thrilling race so far. Two laps to go in this race. We try and go around the outside into turn one. Ignore that visual glitch. Work in progress, of course. But uh, tyres starting to go off now as we're pushing the limits, trying to keep those behind at bay. But uh, I think we might just about be able to hold on to this. We have Carlos Sainz chasing us down in the Ferrari. And that is no mean feat, trying to keep him behind us as we defend really hard into the middle sector. Sainz trying to go around the outside, not making it work. We're basically trying to break the slipstream here and defend really hard to get our first podium in this new car, in the Ferrari ourselves. We've got one of the best engines. Max Verstappen wins, and we are going to come home in P3. Yes! Nice work, mate. You did really well today. I think the boss is going to be happy with that one. Not a bad way to start our My Team career. As an owner-driver, we jumped in our own car and beaten a factory-powered Ferrari in their own machinery, which is really, really cool. But there we go. That is a race. Uh, and I thought I'd go more in-depth with that first race, just, just to show you guys how the gameplay would work, how... Uh, the, the pit stops, the strategy, etc. would play out. I think you'll get a little bit more strategy with a 50% race. But even still, it was, um, well, 25% race. We had a lot of tire wear there, which was very surprising. I can't quite remember if Codemasters said they adjusted the tire wear scaling for shorter races. I'll have to get back to you guys on that. But very, very interesting first race. Uh, in order to fit the rest of the season in, we're going to start simulating some races and see how that affects the results because I had a good race, but my teammate didn't have such a good race. Here is the Pirelli hot laps feature where you get to drive supercars and various challenges at uh, each racetrack. But um, I'll save that for another video. So subscribe for that uh, to see that later on in the week. Anyway, we're simulating now. This is the next race that we've got coming up, and I believe this is Jeddah. Uh, we ended up forfeiting all of our practice programs because I simulated practice. You can actually do the practice, the quick practice programs. I didn't do that. I just went straight to the race. We started from last, and we ended up in seventh place. So for a simulated race, that's actually a pretty good result for us. In previous games, you'd get rubbished. For, for simming, but it seems a little bit better. And my teammate actually got his first win in his return to F1. And as such, as we roll into Australia, my home race, we now have the best car. We have outdeveloped Ferrari and Red Bull. So momentum is on our side. We're earning resource points. Even though I didn't fully maximize that last weekend, we're getting there. We're getting stronger. And the other teams aren't developing as fast as us, which is... Very, very interesting. Again, working on our strengths, trying to boost our weaknesses as best we can. We up did an upgrade to the pit equipment, which will give us faster pit stops. That's a new facility upgrade for the 2022 game. And now we're at Imola, which is a sprint race, and we were on a massive charge. I actually didn't qualify very well when I qualified myself, and I had to really charge my way through in only five laps. So if you do a 50% race, this race will be 10 laps. So you have a little bit more comfort, a little bit more time to get through the field. For me, I was in a rush. I had to get past these guys, and I was very lucky with these guys having some front wing damage and me getting up the inside of George Russell on this last lap. But I've underfueled the car a little bit too much, and all that hard work comes undone on the final straight, and we go from P8 to outside the points, earning nothing from the sprint race, which was oh so gutting. We ended up having a, a better result with uh, the main race, the Grand Prix, which was simulated. P6, but still nowhere, nowhere quite close enough to our teammate. We then get told to take more fuel out of future races because we overfueled apparently, in the main Grand Prix. 
But, uh, yeah, that was funny. We now have uh, the best car again. Ferrari did catch up, but then we've uh, extended the performance gap between the two of us. And it showed in our first 1-2 of the season. Michael Schumacher leading the way in Spain. I'm the Barrichello to my Schumacher. And I'm just getting battered by my teammate. I've, I've bought out a Formula 1 team and I'm, I'm the bridesmaid each and every week. So for Monaco, I tried to buck the trend. I tried to do the race myself, got involved in an incident, nearly got lapped by Michael, just about managed to save my weekend by getting in front of the safety car and on the lead lap again. But then the safety car came in too early. It didn't wait for me to catch up. And with only six laps to go, there was no point in continuing. So that was a big fat DNF. No points from Monaco. And Michael extends the championship lead even further as we go into Azerbaijan, Canada. <laughs> and Britain. The car is just unbelievable at this point. We, we are creating a dynasty. Ferrari, mid-2000s, 2.0. Contract renewal comes up. I'm getting battered by Schumacher, so my only option is to fire him and hire Oscar Piastri, the guy I wanted to have from the start. So my championship is now back on because I fired my star driver who was battering me in the standings. Oscar jumps in the car, and he's doing the exact same thing that Michael was doing only a race before. But now, my main competition is out of the sports. And if I just keep hoovering up P2s for the rest of this season, I might have a chance of winning the drivers. <laughs> but Oscar Piastri is on a charge, and I think he might actually win this. There are less sprint races in the second half of the season, which might help Michael's overall standing. But Oscar was just on a charge. He was very, very consistent very very strong but he wasn't winning by as much as what michael was so i knew in the back of my head i, I might have a chance of still winning this this championship in monza i decided to do the race myself qualified p13 again the qualifiers aren't great turn one at monza was as you would expect turn one at monza to be absolute carnage i got a five second penalty for touching a dnf car and then magnuson here decides to give us a brake check so for my sanity, I decided to do a, a restart on that one. And, and thank goodness I did, because this race turned out much better than the original. Uh, charging our way through the field, Oscar Piastri had an engine penalty for this race. So he ended up starting in P10 or something, but he's still charging his way through the field until this moment. <laughs> Goodbye, Oscar. You're now getting a double stack. And uh, that's probably your chance of winning this Grand Prix out the window. I had to start cheating. I had to start doing dirty tactics to, to stem the flow of momentum that my teammate had. But still, it was to no avail. I still couldn't win a race. It was only P2 again. <laughs> this time, Charles Leclerc getting a win, and I'm sure the Tifosi were very happy about that. But we started simulating again, and it was back to more of the same. Oscar Piastri absolutely dominating in Formula 1 in the best car. You give a champion a good car, and they will deliver. And deliver we have. We are now the Constructors Champions after the Singapore Grand Prix. The trophy is ours. We have done something which I haven't even managed to do on F1 2021 yet. And we're already Constructors Champions. Uh, we have regulation changes coming for Season 2. Fernando Alonso announced his retirement. Oscar Piastri kept winning. Standard stuff, really. Three things in life are certain. Death, taxes, and Oscar Piastri winning. But in Brazil, that changed. P2 in the sprint race, but P1 for Benjamin Daly in the main Grand Prix. And with that, I won the Drivers' Championship. A well-earned victory for me. 100% legit. Definitely deserved. Earned on merits. Best driver throughout the season. Most consistent. Lee P2. And uh, there we go. Marduk Motorsports are champions of Season 1 of F1 22, my team. The acclaim goes through the roof. My bank balance goes through the roof. And really, that is... 
all that needs to be said for F1 22. I don't even need to play the main game now. I have already completed it and the game isn't even out yet. So thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. F1 22 already completed it, mate.